Okay, so this is chapter two, tangent lines and rates of change. So we're gonna first start off by So let's draw this first. And let's go ahead, instead of a, we can call it x naught, it doesn't matter. x naught, a, they're both constants. Whenever you subscript a variable, that usually means a constant. So we want to find the slope, so let's recall what a slope is. It's rise over run. Rise is the y values. So our slope of PQ, of the line PQ, is going to be f of x, which as you can see by the picture, the line PQ is a secant line. So this is PQ, and that's what we were asked to do. So as x approaches x naught, you can see a limit taking place here. Basically, as point Q approaches P, as x gets closer and closer, because it varies, what do you think happens? Well, I'm going to show you. Okay, so here's an interactive where you can see point P and Q can be moved, but let's say we fix point P. Point P is our fixed point, constant A. And then Q, as, we, as X approaches A, that's the same thing as X approaches X naught. When we move it closer, see that secant line? It's getting closer and closer. And doesn't that look like it's gonna approach, what's gonna happen when they actually are infinitely close? Woo, that's secant. See, that's a secant. Crosses two points on the graph becomes a tangent line, yes. So that's what happens. Let's write that out. The slope of the tangent line at a point is equal to the limit, this limit as x approaches x naught of the secant line. The secant line is this. And again, remember what I was saying about concepts. You don't have to memorize this so much if you already know what a slope is, y2 minus y1, or you're changing your y values. Do your slope of your secant, and you take x approaches x naught. x approaches x naught. That's the tangent line, the slope of the tangent line. Without the limit, it's a secant line. And this is provided the limit exists. So if we want the actual tangent line to the curve, so we're looking for the equation of a line, which is y minus y naught equals your slope, x minus x naught, but your slope is the slope of the tangent. That's this one that we just found, the slope of the tangent. Now there is an alternate form to this equation, the slope of the tangent line. And it comes from, let me just draw a picture, so we have our x naught is fixed, or x as x approaches x naught. We're going to call that distance, this distance, h. So we're going to let h is equal to that distance. x looks like the bigger one. And so as x approaches x naught, which is this, as x approaches x naught, what is h approaching? h is approaching, well, as x gets there, closer and closer and closer, h is shrinking to zero, yeah. And so solving for x here, we're gonna get x equals x naught plus h. So we need this, we need this. So our m tan, our slope of our tangent, our alternate form is the limit, again, as x approaches x naught, h approaches 0, and f of x, this is x, f of 
So again, x is x naught plus h minus f of x naught all over, it was x minus x naught, but isn't that what we let h equal to? So all over h. So you could use either form, and I'll tell you, sometimes one way is easier than the other. <laughs> Not always, sometimes they're equal. Advantage of this one, sometimes it's easier to factor out the h. When you have a limit of zero over zero, which is what we have here, when h approaches zero, it's zero over zero. You know, you have to factor out an h, factor out something to change that limit. Okay, so we want the equation of the tangent line. So the equation of a line is y, we just wrote it up there. We want the slope of the tangent at that point. So there's the equation. We have x naught equals 3 to plug in. f of 3 is my y naught. And now the last piece we need is our slope of our tangent line. Well, we'll do both. Well, let's do this old one. And it looks like I have it backwards, but since I have both of them backwards, it doesn't matter. But if I switch it up, sometimes it's easier. So our x naught is 3, which is just 9. So of course we get 0 over 0 in determinant. So again, m tan is 6. It's our last missing piece. y minus y naught was 9. 6 is our m tan the equation of a tangent line at x equals 3. So as I mentioned before, we could use the definite, different definition for the mtan. And let's go ahead and do it for the same problem. So we got the same thing. If you remember, m tan was 6 above there. Yes. m tan was 6 using the other definition. See how different that was? Got the same thing. And again, I was at those canceled. I was left with 6h plus h squared. I factor out an h. Make sure you don't just divide only one of them by h. That's a common mistake. So this is t... So we're going to have rate, the average weight, uh, sorry, the average rate, or the rate is also the average velocity, which is distance divided by time traveled. And if you look, the distance traveled is the y value divided by the time. And this is on the interval that we see in the picture. So on an interval, looks like it, we have the slope of the secant line, the average rate, same formula. And then we have instantaneous. There we have it. Let's do an example. So part A, so average rate is the secant line, which is f of two is one over two. So the slope of the tan, which is the instantaneous, is the limit at a point. Another way of doing this, instead of finding a common denominator on top first, is to clear your fraction, times it by one. It becomes one minus x.
So if I take out a negative, it actually changes each of those. That's a negative one and a positive x. Now they're exactly the same. So if I, just to show you when I multiply through by the negative, one minus x is minus x minus one. And again, I do that. Now I plug in one and that answer is negative one. A different answer from part A, usually.